right, we're going over again another movement moment. This time we're talking about being inverted. That means handstand push-ups, kipping and strict, handstand walk, and wall walk. I'm not gonna talk about how to do these movements. This is about getting them faster, more efficient, working on different strategies of those movements. So it's not gonna be a tutorial on how to do those movements. You guys should have that, either be working on that or something in that way, but we're trying to get them better from what you do have. So these are tips and strategies to do that. All right, this is handstand push-ups kipping. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is our hand placement. Usually we have a box. You guys might be able to see it, but we have some kind of line. There's usually a tape line right here and it goes around. Usually the rule is that we can maybe, sometimes it's that you have your fingertips on it, some is that it can't touch at all. I think the most recent is that your fingers can't touch it at all. But the first thing we wanna talk about with our handstand push-ups, the reason I brought that up is because the width of your hands is the range of motion which your handstand push-up has to go through. This goes for kipping and strict. Usually with a wider range, doing this like half push-up super fast, it might be a little bit more difficult for some with their shoulders, but it allows you to move through those reps a lot faster. Otherwise, we wanna have them just outside of our shoulders. As you can see, this would be my pressing area. My thumb is just outside of my shoulder, and that's what I would do for a strict press and a handstand push-up. I'm not trying to stay underneath my shoulders, but other, I just wanna keep them just outside. So that's what I'm gonna be like in this kipping version. So when I'm at the bottom, I'm thinking about my hand placement. My hand's on this line, but there's actually a tape line right here that you just was taken off. But I would keep my hands inside the square. I'm kipped up, and then as I come down, I'm here, and my hands will always stay right here. If I could push it and put my fingertips on here, then that would allow less range of motion that I have to go through. But otherwise, you wanna stay inside that box. You guys can play with different hand placements, what works best for you. But the next thing we're gonna talk about is our actual kip of our feet. So you're gonna watch the difference of my kip of how much I'm pushing with my legs. When we're starting our handstand push-ups, a lot of times the biggest kip possible will allow less fatigue on your shoulders. So that's what we usually start out with, where I'm gonna pull my knees all the way to my elbows. As you learn to speed up and that capacity develops, you might even shorten your kip to allow for greater speed through the reps because that big loading, we don't always have the time to do that. So we wanna develop that shoulder strength so that we can shorten that kip and allow the speed to go a little bit quicker. So here's the first one, the big push of my legs. Come down, all the way down basically to my elbows, big kip up. I barely feel that in my shoulders. Coming all the way down, big kip up. Outside of that, have your short kips. Just barely bit in my legs. I'm still getting a huge drive with my legs, but I'm just not taking that extra moment to get as big of a drive as possible. I'm still kicking really hard, but I'm just not going all the way down to create that large loading time. It's a little bit harder on my shoulders, but I'm able to move through reps a lot quicker while still taking some fatigue away from my shoulders. All right, next portions of that kip of our handstand push-ups, we're talking about our head placement and our hip placement, considering when we're in that kipping position. So when we do this hip position, I talked about that big kip where I'm pulling my knees all the way close to my elbows. With that, I don't wanna have my um, weight centered on my hands because that's extra pressure I'm putting on my shoulders. I want to relieve that pressure by putting my hips on the wall. They will actually be resting on here. When we're doing the fast kip, we're not doing that so much anymore. It might tap a couple of times, but otherwise we don't want that speed to end up tapping the wall and pushing us down. Um, so we want to take that extra time when we're doing the big kip to rest. That way we're taking pressure off our hands. When we're doing our fast kip, we don't want it so much that way we're not accidentally pushing off the wall and away from the wall to the getting off our handstand push-ups. So this is what it's gonna look like. First with my hips on the wall. So going for my big kip, 
right? I'm way down here. You can actually see my hips touching the wall and then I'm going to push up all the way. Come down, it touches the wall. Up, it touches the wall. Now if I'm doing my fast kip, I'm not gonna touch the wall so much. I'll just barely tap it. I'm not so much resting on the wall for my kips, but I might just tap the wall. I'm not trying to hit against it. I don't need to feel that because sometimes you'll get in your kip and you're going a lot of reps and you'll be away from the wall. You don't want to always have to feel that wall, but you likely will even with those fast kips. So think about when you're doing the big kip, actually resting that hip on the wall. And when you're doing those fast kips, it should just be a tap, 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 not a big rest on the wall. Aside from that, you want to think about our head position. When we're in the bottom of our kip, we're not trying to pull all of our weight to the back of our head. That's actually dangerous for your neck. We want to keep that tight tuck chin locked in and we're putting on the crown of your head. So just the top. Not on your forehead, not way back here on the flat part of your head, but the crown of your head. So when I'm in my bottom position, I'm not sitting way back here where my head is flat. I'm actually slightly forward on the top crown of my head. I don't know if you guys can see this space, but there's a small space right here behind, between the mat and the back of my head. So I want to keep my head forward. My neck is actually tight. Well, now I can press up. Tight position. I'm not go walking back and forth every time. A lot of times you guys will see people rock back and then when they want to press they'll rock forward that would become very dangerous when we're going through lots of reps so you want to keep your neck in one position what helps that is looking across the room at the bottom corner of the opposite side of the room that way you're always locked in one place you're keeping your eye on that place and then your head will stay in one position rather than press look up back down Look up, you don't wanna do that because then you're not keeping this active in one position. You wanna keep that to keep your neck safe for this very high movement to where you're just basically bouncing off your head.